Howdy folks, today I wanted to talk to you about a topic that as photographers we should all be thinking about wherever your work is going and that's about having your monitor correctly calibrated. Now I'm going to go through all of the reasons why you really want to consider this, how you can do it on the cheap or even for free and then one reason why maybe it doesn't matter after all. Now essentially calibrating your monitor means that you're making sure that what your screen is showing you is actually what's in the file. That may seem obvious, but I can tell you very few people, even full-time photographers, have their screens really accurately calibrated. The first thing you wanna do if you aren't already is get familiar with your histogram, what it's telling you and how it works. I've done a video on that before, I'll put it as a card above. I've done so many different topics in the past. If you're not already, please make sure to take the time to subscribe to the channel for future content. Your histogram shows you a graphical representation of what's in your file. But if, for example, your file is this, it, let's just say it's perfect, it's exactly what you wanted. But then when you get it onto your computer and see it through your screen, your screen is showing it, let's just say, for example, that it's too bright that your screen is set too bright. So even though the file is actually exactly how you want it, on screen, it looks too bright to you. So as you go through an edit, you drop the exposure down, and then actually, once you export that, you've exported it darker than you want it to be. That's a tip of the iceberg of why you want your screen properly calibrated. Now, calibrating the black point, the white point, and the contrast through there is one issue. Color calibration is a whole extra kettle of fish. Now, in terms of calibrating, I'm really fortunate. I use a pair of ISO monitors in studio that self-calibrate every 24 hours or whenever you set them up. A little spectrometer drops down off that's built into the screen, does a series of readings, and then adjusts the color and tonal range on the monitor to make sure I'm seeing exactly what's in my file. That's really important. I can tell you I know so many people don't do it for two reasons. One, so many computers, but especially Apple stuff, whether it's phones or computers, straight out of the box, box, they're more saturated, more punchy, and brighter than they need to be, than what is genuinely in the files. And I run a monthly competition where I ask people to submit their photos. We just did a black and white theme competition and so many images I had come in were way underexposed. And of course, that's an artistic choice, but I mean, even by me boosting them by one to two stops, they were still a low-key, dark and dramatic image. They just came in so dark, which really makes me think that a lot of those people maybe were editing on a screen that was brighter than it needed to be. And that can happen lots of ways. It could be just that that's how it came from the factory. It could be that when you're, for example, watching a movie on Netflix or something, you bump up the brightness to be able to see it better but then it doesn't get set back. Now, there, if you don't have the luxury of having screens that will calibrate themselves, you can get spectrometers or colorometers. There's famous ones, there's the x rite ones, and there's also the Data Color Spider series. Both do a great job. They come with their own software. They show a test pattern, it reads them, and then it will help you basically rewrite the color and tonal tables for your lookup table for the monitor so that it's showing you what you really are getting from the files. In terms of doing your tonal range, so at least you're getting your exposure correct, check out, there's a bunch of different free resources. I have no affiliation with them at all, but check out photofriday.com. I'll have a link to them below as well as the different products I've mentioned. They have a page that you can take a look at that will show you perfect black to perfect white and all of the increments and a bunch of different test charts essentially that looking at them on my screen, I can see every little nuanced detail quite easily because it's a high quality screen and it's properly calibrated. But if your screen's set too dark, you might find that you can't differentiate the three darkest panels, or if it's too bright, you might differentiate the three brightest panels, for example. So that can at least give you a starting point to help you set your black point or your white point or to your overall brightness on your screen. And you'll need to refer to your operating system and your actual display to figure out how to do that exactly. Now, having said all of that and the importance of it, one extra reason you wanna do that is if you're printing, if you just send your photos out to a lab, they're gonna print it as the file comes. You can assume any decent printer is going to be fully calibrated and then you might get something back much darker than you were expecting. 
It opens up a whole can of worms if you get into using particular paper stocks and particular inks and particular printers doing it yourself because then there's all kinds of printer calibration you have to do and you'll use different profiles in the editing which is a little bit beyond this particular video. Now the one often retort that you'll get is that you don't really need to do it because and that because is if 90% of your audience are using iPhones and have their screen up too bright, then you know what are you going to do? If you maybe doing it on a device that's too bright as well is the way to go. But in my opinion, that's a misnomer. You have no control over what it's viewed on. You don't know if people are going to be viewing it on calibrated devices or not, if they're going to be looking at it in bright situations where they can barely see the screen or dark situations, or if they get a privacy screen on their cell phone that mutes all of the colors, you don't know any of that. The best you can do if you're trying to present your images professionally is to export them correctly. Then, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Some people will be overexposed, some will be under, some will be whatever on their different devices, but at least you've done the right thing and put them at the right point. So then if you had, if someone's using a dark phone and you had exported it too dark, then they won't even see your images or vice versa on the overexposed side. Let me know any questions or comments on that one. Please do make sure you're subscribed and like for more content coming soon and I'll see you guys soon.